Well, when something goes to the dogs, it usually means the situation's getting worse. But City TV's Chris Bell learned that's not always the case. In our next story, we find out how the Creeks Division is using dogs in an innovative way to fight water pollution. Imagine you're Sherlock Holmes, and you're hot on the trail of a serial cherry pie thief. You find a trail of cherries, but as you follow that trail, at every corner you have to take a sample and send it to the lab to determine it came from the same pie. The results can take weeks, and by that time the thief, the pie, and the trail could be long gone. That's the predicament City Creeks Division staff have found themselves in when trying to locate the sources of pollution. We've been working for several years trying to find the sources of pollution in our creeks, what kind of pollution we have, where it's coming from. This of course leads us up into the storm drains and we had high um, levels of indicator bacteria which lead to beach warnings being posted. And in order to tackle that, we started working with Dr. Patricia Holden at UCSB who uses some of the most cutting edge DNA-based techniques to try and find out if the bacteria are really coming from um, human waste or animal waste. But that cutting edge technology is expensive and the results take time. It's really challenging. What we're finding changes in space and time and it takes us a couple of weeks to get our, our results back. So we have narrowed in some areas, but it's really hard to find the um, exact point source. What the Creeks Division staff needed was an economical testing method that could provide results quickly. Enter Sable and Logan, two former shelter dogs with noses for, well, human sewage and also detergents. Uh, in the storm water system, not just in the enclosed system, but also in the open channels. Those noses caught the eyes of Murray and UCSB researchers at a recent conference. Just the light bulb went off for us that if we had real-time results, we could really uh, hone in on these problems a lot easier. So Creek staff, along with the researchers, got a grant from the Water Environment Research Foundation to test the accuracy and effectiveness of these sewage-sniffing super sleuths. We're going to some sites where, that we've uh, tested before so we know where we should see a positive response from the dogs or a negative response from the dogs. That helps us know how to use the method when we then go to places that we haven't tested before. To get an idea of why dogs are so well suited for this work, consider this. The area of scent receptors in a human nose is roughly the size of a postage stamp. For dogs like Sable and Logan, it's the size of a Kleenex tissue. The dogs are trained to signal their handler when they detect sewage. For Sable, the signal is a bark. Logan sits down. Generally what will happen is whoever the client is will have some idea of where they would like us to go and investigate. Depending on if it's an enclosed storm sewer system, we just open up the manholes or the sewer grates and uh, just have the dogs smell from the surface. They don't go in into any uh, confined space areas. If neither dog gives the signal of a positive detection, they move on to the next location. Total testing time, including travel, is minutes compared to days or weeks for the other important but more expensive testing methods. So how did Sable and Logan do? The dogs are alerting at the places that our DNA results have showed, shown that we have some human waste getting into the storm drain, and they have not alerted at some of the sites where we've had high indicator bacteria levels, but no signs of human waste. So, so far, so good. This cutting edge work wouldn't be possible without the grant in Measure B, the ballot measure approved by voters in 2000 that directs taxes on hotel visitors to water quality improvement projects.